Okay, testing one, two, three. The sermon's entitled "The Symbolism of Baptism." I'm going to explain. I want to explain, you know, <clears throat> what baptism is using um, Bible verses, and then explain to you how it, it just points people to Christ and the, the finished work of the cross, the gospel. So let me open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your word. I just thank you for allowing us to, to see in your word that. Um, Baptism is a picture of, uh, of our salvation. <clears throat> it's not part of salvation. I'm going to explain that. Keep us safe and bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, first of all, I'd like to point out, <clears throat> literal water baptism does not save anybody. And because how can it save somebody? The Bible says we're saved by faith alone. Okay, let's turn over to Luke chapter 7. Now, it's, it's symbolic. There's a point for it. But it's, it, the point of it is not, you know, <clears throat> for it, it's not to, you know, give people assurance. I've heard this one this idiot say, you can't have any true assurance of your salvation unless you've been baptized, r literally baptized. And I know people right now <clears throat> that have not been baptized and have more assurance than this idiot. And yes, that's what he is. He's an idiot. You say, well, you shouldn't call people names. Well, I'm tired of people, you know, distorting the gospel. I'm tired of people trying to diminish assurance based on something as silly as baptism. You know, imagine if a person's out there you, you, out on, on the street, and you give, a, you give them a gospel track, you know. It tells them, you know, the good news, the plan of salvation. And then he thinks to himself, wait a minute, I believed on Jesus, John 3.16, John 3.36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. But then he starts to doubt, well, maybe I'm not really saved because I haven't been water baptized. So then he, try, then he goes. To, he tries to find himself a good church that baptizes people. Now, is this is this biblical? No. <clears throat> Luke seven fifty, and he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. The moment you have faith on Christ, for eternal life you're saved. There's no mention of baptism there. <clears throat> now let me let me go over a, you know two types of, of baptisms. Now, first of all, there is a literal baptism that we are commanded, you know, to perform. <clears throat> But it's the people that are already saved. It's all it's all symbolic. Turn over to uh, Acts chapter eight, look at verse thirty-seven. Actually, look at jump back to verse thirty-six. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, "See, here is water. What doeth hinder me to be baptized?" This is a literal baptism, okay? Because the priest already saved, okay? A lot of people are confused. They say you have to be baptized in water to be saved, and that's garbage. Okay, and Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, see that, he's already confirming it, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <clears throat> and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. So that's a literal baptism. But it's all symbolic, and I'm going to go over that in a minute. Now let's take a look at some of the baptisms in the Bible that are holy the Holy Spirit baptism. Let's take a look at some of those baptisms. <clears throat> Mark chapter 1. Actually, since we're in Acts, just go ahead and turn back to Acts chapter 1, and then we'll look at the, the one in Mark. Acts chapter 1, it says in verse 5, see, a water baptism is a person's getting wet. You know, they're not, it's, it's, there's, no, <clears throat> there's no saving, you know, a, a power in it. It's just that your person's getting wet. But see, the Holy Spirit baptizes somebody, and it's a spiritual baptism. So let's take a look at Acts chapter 1. It says, For John, in verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. <clears throat> so it's a spiritual baptism. Okay, now turn over and turn back to Mark chapter 1. Now, I don't I don't put a lot of put a lot of stress on this. Now I have baptized people. And I basically just go over the gospel while I baptize them and explaining them what it all means. <clears throat> Mark chapter 1. Let's take a look at verse 8. I indeed have baptized you with water, <clears throat> but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Now turn over to um, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is something the Holy Ghost does by, by himself. It's a supernatural, miraculous thing. 
It has nothing to do with the flesh, and it's not something that we can fill in the flesh. It's just something that, that, that the Bible declares to be true. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. <coughs> it reads in verse 13, For by one Spirit, okay, the word Spirit there is capitalized. That denotes the Holy Spirit. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now what he's saying is it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a believer in Christ, you're baptized into the body of Christ, and it's by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> it's, a complete, it's a completed action. Now, turn over to Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 2. It's a, it's a picture of a, of a spiritual baptism. See, so many people are so hung up on, on, the, on the flesh, on the, on the physical, on the outward. When baptism in the, of the Holy Spirit is, a, is, a, is not a physical thing. Okay? Now, now here's why I, I, I totally disagree with this, this lie out there that says you have to be water baptized to be saved. Number one, what if a person's on an airplane and they read a gospel track or they read a Bible or they, somebody left the Bible in the seat and they pick it up and it's got the, the Roman road or whatever and it, ha it goes over the plan of salvation. Are you trying to tell me? And then, and then all of a sudden the plane crashes. Are you trying to say that person went to hell because the, he was unfortunate? He was <clears throat> insofar that he, he didn't get off the plane? That's ridiculous. No, it's not part of salvation. To, you know, getting, getting dunked under water does not save anybody. It's, um, it's Jesus Christ that saves. Baptism is simply a picture of salvation, and I'm going to explain that here. Let me just go ahead and... Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. Now, let's take a look at this. Let's jump back to verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. <clears throat> and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision. Now, look at this. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spiritual circumcision. This is kind of like, you know, a, a spiritual baptism is the same, same thing. C circumcised with, made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now look at verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. Now, you're buried with him. It's a spiritual thing. Okay? It's not something we do literally or physically. You're buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Now, this is, this is, the Bible says this has already taken place. It's not that it's going to take place. It already, already has. This should let you know that once, once saved, always saved. You're secure. Because you've already been buried in, in, in him with, in baptism. And the declaration that you're risen with him, it's already declared. It's right there. Through the faith, now look at this, through the faith of the operation of God. It's God who did it. God does all the work in saving us. 100%, all of it. Okay? Who raised him from the dead. So just as he raised Christ from the dead, he raised the believer from the dead as well. That promises them they're going to heaven. So now, let's go over what the baptism represents. When Jesus Christ is standing there, or excuse me, when he, Jesus Christ is hanging on the cross, okay, that represents, or whenever a person's standing in, in the baptismal, that represents Christ on the cross. Okay, when, when Christ died and was buried, that's when the person goes underwater. That's what it represents. And then, when he, and then when the person comes up out of the water, it represents the resurrection. And Jesus Christ says, I am the resurrection and the life. Let me just go ahead and turn there. So anyone who believes on him it has received that resurrection. So this is basically just symbolism. Should we be baptized? Absolutely. But, it, but you know what? You don't have to be baptized physically or literally to be saved. Because, you know, salvation is by grace alone. It's not of works. And technically a baptism would be a work. But it, like I said, it does not save anyone. It's just, it just tells people of what Christ did for them. <clears throat> John 11, <clears throat> verse 25. See, it represents, when you go under the water, it represents you, you, you dying with Christ. You know? it's, a, it's a supernatural thing. It has nothing to do with behavior or lifestyle or any of that. A lot of people are, are confused. You know, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. That means... That has nothing to do with behavior. So many people are, are mixed up. 
They say, well, you gotta, you got to be crucified from, it, from your flesh and crucified from your sins. Nope. That's not what it's talking about. <clears throat> Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now look at this. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. Okay, he that believeth in me. Doesn't say repent. Doesn't say confess. It doesn't say do good works. It says believeth. He that believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So, it's the whole point of a baptism is to let people know of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's the whole point. Now, you got to watch, watch out for these false teachers out there, these Pentecostals, who claim that you have to be you know, submerged under real water in order to have your sins removed. That's not the case. Hey, your sins were, were removed by the blood of Jesus, not by any water. So I need to make that clear. <clears throat> People that want to add works and add a baptism, they've canceled the gift of eternal life. You can't add anything. Okay? So that's all baptism represents. Let me go over it one more time. When a person is standing there um, in, the, in the water, whoever baptizes them, that person represents... Well, the one baptizing them represents Christ, and then the person represents them and what Christ did for them. When he's standing in the water, it represents Christ on the cross. When he's going under, getting being dunked under the water, it represents Christ dying for their sins and then being buried. And when they come out of the water, it represents Jesus Christ rising from the dead. It's, it's all it is. It's representative. It's symbolic. It's emblematic. It's not, there's nothing more to it. <clears throat> so I need to point that out, make that clear, um, that it's all a spiritual, you know, you know event. So, <clears throat> that's all I have. Let me close in prayer. To God, thank you for allowing us to understand your word and just understand that, you know, your word says that um, God is a spirit. And he's to, be, he's to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And the Holy Spirit is what baptizes us and secures our salvation. The Bible makes that clear. That the Holy Spirit will never see corruption. The Holy One will never see corruption. The Holy Spirit's going to abide with us forever. So that's clear that we have eternal security. Keep us safe. Bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat>